Hi, Mark here from PondologySolutions.com and in this uh, video pond tip today I want to talk about uh, the top five questions that we get regarding aeration, pond aeration, and aerating a pond. So let's get started. We'll do this rapid fire if we can. First question, what's the difference between a fountain and an aerator? Well, fountains obviously work on the surface of ponds. They shoot water up into the air, pulling it from underneath, propelling it up into the air where it will fall back in uh, to the water and it will break the surface tension of the pond's uh, uh, upper part. And so basically in a fundamental way a fountain will help increase some aeration in the upper few feet of a pond body. When we talk about pond aeration at, at Pond Algae Solutions we're really referring mostly to subsurface aeration where we use a land-based pump, an airline, and a diffuser that sits at the bottom of the pond, usually in the deepest area, and it releases very fine bubbled air into the water. It propels it upward, uh, helps break the surface tension a little bit, and it circulates this entire oxygenated uh, water around throughout the entire body of the pond. So for our purposes, we get better results, particularly very low, down deep in deeper ponds when we aerate from the bottom compared to a surface fountain. Fountains are definitely better than nothing and they are good to look at and fun to look at but ultimately if we're trying to really improve uh, the body of the pond in every way we can imagine a subsurface aerator tends to be our choice. They also are usually less expensive to operate, quieter, and they tend to have fewer problems than fountains do too in terms of plugging up and mechanical issues and so forth. So that's all something to consider. Second question, is an aerator really that important for a pond? For example, we've had folks that say I've had fish for a long time with no problems at all. Well our answer of course is yes, it is good to have an aerator in the pond and this year was a perfect example of it. When we hit sustained temperatures of over 100 degrees day after day, this year um, apart from all the others I can remember and we've been doing this work for a long time, we had more calls for people saying I lost all my fish or I'm losing fish and I need to get air in now. And that's a good step to take. You want to try to make a move on that and correct the problem, but ultimately you want to get ahead of the problem. And many of these folks had no problems beforehand, but finally the weather turned on them or the oxygen level dropped in the pond enough and it finally hit a critical mass. And you never know when that's going to come along. So uh, no one can say uh, what the weather's going to be you know, next year or the year down the road. And so the only insurance you have is getting an aerator running and maintaining it so that you can keep your fish healthy. That's the first thing. Second thing is good dissolved oxygen levels are really, really important for the natural biological processes in the pond to keep working well. And these are the cleaning mechanisms, the microbes, the beneficial bacteria that exist in most bodies of water. They need good oxygen levels because they're aerobic and when they work well they will help keep odors down, they will help keep the water cleaner and they can help keep things like algae and weed growth in check somewhat because they simply help keep the pond in a cleaner condition and so oxygen is critical for that work. We don't even put uh, bacteria in a lot of the times unless we know it's a well oxygenated environment because we get that much better results when it is. Third question, how long do aerators, the pumps primarily run? and how expensive are they to operate? Well first, <clears throat> the main component of the aerator is the compressor or the pump and many of what we work with are rocking piston systems and they're designed to run continuously for five years or more many run seven ten years that's not unheard of and this is in continuous operation the good news is is that the seals that are the parts that can wear out on these most of the time these are easily repaired even by the the, the uh, pond owner with very very little problem and very few tools it's simple simple to work with and um, and generally they run trouble free for a long time now all the systems we have have a minimum two-year warranty on the compressors and five years on the airline and diffusers and so they're well covered well backed by any mechanical problems which can occur and to be realistic we've had very few problems with any of these systems but because they are mechanical um, it's hard to say that they'll be a hundred percent trouble free but they're always uh, well covered uh, by the manufacturers and they do provide long-running um, 
benefits to the pond. Operational costs generally from our quarter horsepower, and I'm speaking more on the large ponds because that's where the costs add up here. Operating costs range from about $10 a month for this, the quarter horsepowers up to about $50 a month for our very largest unit, which includes about, uh, well, that'd be the AM100, which is two one-third horsepower systems running together. So uh, it gives you an idea of costs. Are aerators very loud? Good question, something a lot of people have concerns about. Compared to your uh, air compressor that you have in your garage sitting at home that you fill up your car tires with, no, these things are ultra quiet. Um, all of our systems, including the AM100 that I just mentioned, are rated below 50 decibels when they're running and hooked up to their airlines and everything. 50 decibels, for example, is a normal verbal conversation between two people. If you were to overhear it, from about 10 feet away. So it's not very loud at all. They generally produce a light hum. If that, you're lucky to hear them if you're uh, far away at all. And so they do a great job without being a, a huge intrusion on property and, and uh, the aesthetics that you want around your pond. And another question, can I make one myself that will work? We've had people ask this and I think it's a valid question in this day of DIY uh, efforts. The answer to that, best I can tell you, is maybe, but the critical part that people seem to always get wrong is the diffusion of the air. The compressors that we have are designed for this work, but they're, they're a compressor that can be used in other applications too. The airline is simply airline that we've uh, determined holds up well and is a good value for, for uh, the work. But ultimately it's the diffusion that's the key. You can't just run a pump with a hose on the end of it with some holes poked in it uh, or just run air out the end of a hose and expect this to do very much good. This is not a circulator. It's not just a circulator, I should say. It's using diffused air and so the diffusers on these systems are well designed to create very fine particulated air bubbles and that's along with the uh, pressure coming from the pump will create a vibrancy of, of released air that a lot of the DIY systems I've seen really aren't producing very well. So you want to make sure that you get a um, the right setup, particularly in the diffusion part of it, and then you should have good luck with it. And finally, here's a bonus question, and I get this question too, so it's important to point out. Do aerators make a good investment for a pond? And I would say absolutely, only because with due respect to their upfront costs, I totally get that, um, but they reduce the cost of additives usually over time. They extend the life and the vibrancy of any bacterial treatments that you may use and those things can add up too. They oftentimes will help reduce the need for chemical applications. They obviously reduce and, and sometimes eliminate the risk of fish losses which uh, while you can't say that it's priceless, you can say that it can cause a lot of headaches if you put some time and money into your fish uh, stock and, and all that. And they generally will help extend the healthy life of a pond out a great deal, which can help minimize or reduce the need to dredge, which can be very expensive, among other things. So if you're really looking to help improve the, the health and vitality of any pond, small or large, an aerator is one of the best investments that you can make. We've sold thousands of these things over the years and I have yet to have a person come back who was asking this question respectfully saying is this really worth the money to come back and say that it didn't pay off, that it wasn't a good investment for their pond. Uh, ultimately it's one of the best investments you can make beyond all the other things that you could throw at the problems. This one covers a lot of the ground very well. So. If you have any additional questions on pond aeration or anything related to your pond and caring for it, be sure to contact us at pondalgiesolutions.com. We're here to help. Thanks a lot.